So, could you tell us um, who are the letter writers featured in this collection? The letter writers in The Aching Heart are Sylvia Townsend Warner, who is very well known, her lover and lifetime companion Valentine Ackland, who was a poet, <clears throat> uh, Elizabeth Wade White, who was the godmother of the author of the book, so he had access to all her estate when she died, and Elizabeth's lover Evelyn. So there are four women. Evelyn, there's only a few letters from Evelyn. Evelyn was a friend of Sylvia's and Valentine's, and she wrote to them as friends. And then Elizabeth fell in love with Valentine, and Valentine had a serial affair with Elizabeth while Sylvia was still living with her, and then treated Evelyn as the, the dastardly interloper who was going to take Elizabeth from her. The double standards are absolutely extraordinary. But essentially, it's a story of a terrible four-way love triangle. I don't know what a four-way love triangle is, but you know what I mean. Between four women from the late 1920s to the late 50s. Fantastic. Um, and how did you discover the letters? How did you come across Well, them? Peter wrote this book and self-published it on Amazon, and he told me it sold 30 copies in five years, which isn't really very good. The trouble is, he um, he's a very good writer, but he doesn't know anything about book marketing, and he self-published. So I got hold of a review copy when it came out, and I loved it. It said, these are the literary love letters of the, of the decade. Somebody has to republish them properly, because it was quite obvious they hadn't been edited properly. And that was 2013, I think. Time went on, I discovered that I had become a publisher, and I wondered, is the book still available? So I asked him and he said, yes, please, take it. So I re-edited it, um, we redesigned it, we sorted out the photographs, and it's done rather well. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Um, and how did letters survive? Who, how had they been preserved? Well, these letters were all in Elizabeth's house in Connecticut, and the affair was known about. So Claire Harmon's biography of Sylvia Townsend Warner discusses the affair in as much as she had access to the records from Sylvia's side, which were understandably mostly very negative because Sylvia grew to really hate what Elizabeth was doing to Valentine and to her relationship with Valentine. But Elizabeth kept everything that Sylvia and Valentine sent to her, so her house was stuffed with 30 or 40 years of letters, many of which by Sylvia and poems by Sylvia and Valentine had never been seen before or known about. Wow. Um, what does the title mean? <laughs> the Aching Heart, it comes from a poem by William Blake, and Peter chose it. I don't think it's got any relevance to Sylvia and Valentine at all. They were not particularly fond of William Blake, as far as I know. But the idea is, I'll read you the epigraph, probably the simplest way around it. Um, and these are gems of the human soul, the rubies and pearls of a lovesick eye, the countless gold of the aching heart, the martyr's groan and the lover's sigh from his poem, The Mental Traveller. So I think Peter, who clearly likes poetry, figured this was a perfect title to encapsulate all the emotional tra trauma and travails that the letters reflect. Um, wh why did you want to rescue the story from obscurity? I mean, it, wh what was it to you that appealed particularly about it? It was lost literary history. It was lost episode in Sylvia Townsend's Warner's life that was known about but nobody knew the truth of. It's an extraordinary story of transatlantic love affairs. It reflects an awful lot of ordinary life happening at the time of the Spanish Civil War, the Second World War, and austerity in the 1950s. Um, it's the daily life of a well-known poet and her companion. And it's just really interesting. It's very interesting and, and relatable to as a human being. Um, who do you think it'll appeal to? It's important for lesbian history. Um, it's, it's very important to recover and present aspects of lesbian history wherever you can find them because there is so little. It's very important for literary history because it completes the story that, we, that is known already about Sylvia's work, life and work. Um, I think it's important for, for British cultural history too because of their... Sylvia and Valentine were both communists, members of the British Communist Party, so they were part of a very large group of intellectuals and writers who followed that thinking. So it's important to fill in a bit of the background of that movement, as well as domestic home front in the Second World War. There's an awful lot of information about the war and what it was like living in Dorset. 
Fantastic. Um, and how have the Sylvie Towns and Warner aficionados, have they, how have they reacted to it? They loved it. <clears throat> they were very excited when Peter's first book came out, but I think everybody was a bit disappointed in the editing. The story was clear, but it was hiding underneath a morass of stuff that got in the way. So when this came out, there was a lot of very positive response. I sold a lot of copies. Um, I believe it's getting reviewed in the next issue of the Sylvia Townsend Warner Journal. So positive thumbs up all round, I think. Excellent. And the, and the photograph on the front, um, how, did you, how did you pick that? Well, the photograph, this is already in the book, and it's a snapshot by Elizabeth of, of um, Valentine taken on one of their outings on the Dorset Hills in the 30s when they were in the throes of their first affair. So I love it because it's a wonderful portrait of Valentine that we've never seen before. Um, it shows her very masculine clothing, beautiful tailoring, little high heeled shoes, and she's got a box for any camera. And it, it's a moment in a relationship which is central to the book, so it just seemed a perfect cover image to me. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you very much.